I found that the best coffee for diabetes is black coffee. There you go. You don't have to watch any more of this video. But if you're here, I'm guessing you want a little bit more details than that, right? So coffee lovers with diabetes, this is for you. Have you ever noticed that coffee and your diabetes doesn't always seem to agree? You might see your blood sugar shoot up after that first cup of coffee in the morning. Or maybe you find that you need extra insulin for your meal when you have a cup of coffee on the side. And maybe that's making you question, you know, what's the best coffee for diabetes and should we even have coffee? So let's talk about it. When you have watched this video, you'll know why coffee can impact your blood sugars even if you have not added any carbohydrates such as sugar to your coffee. You'll know how to manage your blood sugars if you do choose to enjoy coffee, as well as some of the health benefits and side effects of drinking coffee. And you will know what the best coffee for people with diabetes really is. Let me just get a cup of coffee and we'll get going. Let me start out by saying you're not making things up in your head. Caffeine can very much impact blood sugars, even if it's not something that your medical team is really talking about. But what coffee is actually best for people living with diabetes? As I said in the beginning, I think black coffee is the best for diabetes. However, not all black coffee or caffeinated drinks for that matter, even without milk or sugar, is created equal when it comes to blood sugar impact. The type of caffeine that you choose to enjoy as well as the size are significant factors when it comes to how much of an impact you'll see on your blood sugars. A cup of coffee from, for example, Starbucks can have a very different caffeine content than a cup of coffee from, let's say, Dunkin' Donuts. And the type of roast can also make a real difference. But there are cheat sheets that you can use to find out how much caffeine is in your coffee. And Google can also be your friend if you want to choose a coffee with a lighter caffeine punch. In general, you'll have to consume around 200 milligrams of caffeine to actually see a blood sugar impact. So that's around one to two cups of black coffee or three to four cups of black tea. However, we are all very different. And some people, including myself, will only have to drink one cup of coffee to see a blood sugar impact, whereas other people can drink two, three, four, five cups of coffee without seeing a real heavy blood sugar impact. Caffeine is unfortunately a fairly addictive habit and quitting coffee can unfortunately mean pretty heavy withdrawal symptoms like severe headaches for weeks. But if you'd like to remove this caffeine variable from your diabetes management, you could always switch to decaf coffee. There's a little bit of caffeine in decaf coffee, but likely not enough to impact your blood sugars. What else you might choose to put in your coffee can of course also impact your blood sugars. I think if you're adding a little bit of stevia to your coffee to sweeten it, you're probably in the clear. But some of the things that I know a lot of people like to add to their coffee can be real blood sugar drops. Because even though those flavored creamers are mere tablespoons of liquid, many are very high in sugar. Enough sugar to definitely cause a larger spike in your blood sugars. One of the most useful things that you can do for yourself as a coffee drinker with diabetes is to slowly adjust your taste buds to enjoy the taste of black coffee. You might be surprised to find that you eventually will find that sweetened coffee is overly sweet. You can of course also look into sugar-free options. Just remember that sugar-free doesn't always mean carb-free. And also that milk as well as half and half has naturally occurring sugars or carbs. I did an experiment not that long ago for another video where I tried a lot of different Starbucks drinks. I don't usually drink those and most of them turned out to be a real blood sugar headache. You'll find a link to that video up here, but that experiment really cemented my belief that Black coffee is best for diabetes. Since I do see a blood sugar impact when I enjoy coffee, I have some tips and tricks on how to control blood sugars when drinking coffee. First off, I think about the time of day that I enjoy my coffee. Like a lot of other people, I tend to be fairly insulin resistant in the morning and that then wears off throughout the day. Adding coffee to an already insulin resistant situation can really be a recipe for very high blood sugars. So I often stay clear of coffee in the morning. Another idea is to use the blood sugar rise from coffee to help prevent low blood sugars. This is mainly relevant if you use insulin to manage your blood sugars like I do. I'll often have a cup of coffee before an afternoon workout to help keep my blood sugars in a healthy range. And now that we're talking insulin strategies, you can also just inject rapid acting insulin, so mealtime insulin, to just for your coffee if you need it. Many of us find that we simply need one unit of insulin for a cup of coffee. To better determine coffee's impact on your blood sugars, create a simple experiment. Measure your blood sugars, enjoy your coffee, and then see how your blood sugars are reacting one to two hours after that coffee. Or you could test your body's response to caffeine by simply removing your morning coffee for a few days. Did your insulin needs drop or were your blood sugars just easier to manage? If so, that doesn't tell you you can never have coffee again, 
but it tells you that if you manage with insulin, you might need a little bit more or less insulin, or if you don't, you might need to adjust the amount of coffee that you drink or the timing. Yeah, it might tell you that limiting your coffee intake is probably a good idea. You've seen me hugging this coffee cup throughout this whole video. If you want your own Strong With Diabetes coffee cup, you can get that in my YouTube store. You just go to my YouTube page and click the store tab. Now you have a good understanding of what coffee I prefer from a blood sugar perspective, but I also think it's important to understand why coffee can impact blood sugars. We have something called adenosine receptors, or AR, that work in our bodies to slow things down. AR binds to your cells and slows down cell activity. So this helps us fall asleep at bedtime or helps you calm down and recover after intense activity. When you drink caffeine, it blocks these ARs from binding to your cells, which enables your cells' activity to stay high, giving you more energy and preventing you from falling asleep. When you consume caffeine, a lot of other exciting things goes on in the body, including it releasing adrenaline. And that is why your blood sugars can spike when you drink caffeine. Adrenaline is known as a flight or fight hormone, and it helps your body endure intense stress, good as well as bad. That can be something like a competition, a roller coaster ride, or a stressful situation. But why would that increase your blood sugars, you might ask? Well, adrenaline helps you endure those stressful situations by asking your liver to release stored energy, and that's in the form of glucose. Yes, you heard that right. Your liver stores glucose, known as glycogen, and when your body thinks that you need that energy, it'll have it release it into your bloodstream. So during the day, your liver releases tiny amounts of glycogen between meals so that your brain can get the glucose it needs second by second to actually function. And during stressful events or when you're enjoying that cup of coffee, your liver will release a larger portion of glycogen, giving your body a significant dose of glucose for fuel. And that, my friends, is how caffeine spikes your blood sugars. As a little side note, if you drink coffee later in the day or in the evening, that unfortunately can decrease the sleep quality for some people. And unfortunately, lack of quality sleep can decrease your insulin sensitivity meaning your body is less effective at using the insulin you either produce or inject. And now that we're on the topic of insulin resistance, let's look at this small but actually really relevant study. It consisted of 10 people with type 2 diabetes, and the goal was to determine the impact of regular caffeine consumption on overall insulin levels. Pretty interesting. All participants were regular coffee drinkers drinking about four cups of coffee a day, but during this study, they completely stopped drinking coffee. Half were then given caffeine capsules with 250 milligrams, and the rest were giving placebo pills, so no caffeine whatsoever. The results, according to the study, on the days the patients took caffeine, their blood sugar levels were 8% higher, and after every meal, and that included dinner, their blood sugar spiked higher than it did on the day they had no caffeine. Yikes. So does that mean that people with diabetes shouldn't drink coffee or other caffeinated beverages? Well, not necessarily, but it does mean that we should pay close attention to our caffeine consumption and moderate it like we would any other thing that can impact our blood sugars. I think it's important to look at how caffeine impacts your blood sugars, so really pay attention. Measure your blood sugars before as well as after you drink coffee to see exactly how it's impacting your blood sugars. Okay, so all this talk made me wonder, is the best coffee for diabetes no coffee at all? So I did a bit of research and there do seem to be some health benefits associated with drinking coffee. Coffee may protect you from Alzheimer's disease. A 2002 study found that coffee drinkers have up to a 65% lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. Coffee may lower your risk of Parkinson's. Studies show that consuming caffeine, that's not just coffee, significantly lowers the risk of developing Parkinson's. Coffee may protect your liver. A 2006 study found that there's an ingredient in coffee that protects against cirrhosis, so that scarring of the liver caused by many forms of liver disease and conditions, such as hepatitis and chronic alcoholism. Coffee may fight depression. In a 2011 Harvard study, women who drank four or more cups of coffee per day had a 20% lower risk of becoming depressed. That's all good and fine, but there are also some potential side effects of drinking coffee, aside from it raising blood sugars. Some people experience headaches, anxiety, restlessness, sleep problems, and for some regular coffee drinking can also cause digestive issues. In extreme rare situations, high doses of caffeine can induce manic or psychotic symptoms. People with panic disorders or anxiety disorders should therefore be very careful when consuming caffeine. But overall, coffee is safe for most people. 
And although there is no standard, the general recommendation is to keep your coffee consumption to no more than 400 milligrams per day. So that's about four cups of coffee. If your sleep, your mood, or your insulin sensitivity is being significantly impacted by the amount of coffee that you're drinking, well, it might be an idea to dial it back just a little bit. It can also be an idea to limit both natural as well as artificial sweeteners. There you have it. If you ask me, the best coffee for diabetes is black coffee in the amount that works for you and your diabetes. I would like to remind you that changes to your diabetes management should always be done in collaboration with your medical team. I suggest that you see these videos as information and as a starting point for you to figure out what works for you and your diabetes. I think taking steps towards figuring out what works for us individually is so important. When living with diabetes, we can't just sit back and expect our medical teams to manage our diabetes for us. So check out this video where I give you five one minute habits to lowering A1C so you can start taking steps on your own. If you like this video and if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That way you'll never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.